who would have thought that one of the best ways to preserve your privacy would be to hide behind an onion? I'm not talking about growing a literal massive onion and standing behind it hoping that the smell would keep everyone else at bay. No, today's episode is all about the onion router, better known as Tor, used by dissidents, cyber criminals, and even the ordinary folks of the world over to keep their online activities away from prying eyes of government, advertisers, and even stalkers. But how does it work? Why is it considered so secure? And does it have any weaknesses? Tor tries to anonymize your online privacy by encasing your traffic in multiple layers of encryption, then sending it through a number of nodes that peel back the layers one at a time, hence the nickname. Each node only decrypts enough information in the packet to know where to send next. So none of the nodes know both your identity and the identity of whatever website or server you're trying to connect to. This high level of encryption and repeated balancing of network traffic makes Tor quite secure, but it isn't entirely foolproof. At some point, your data has to leave the Tor network to get to wherever it's going through, something called an exit node the very last Tor node that your data travels through. And when your data leaves an exit node and it sends it to the destination, it is no longer necessarily encrypted. While it's very difficult still for the recipient to tell it's you, connecting any unencrypted personal information can be read by both the operator of the exit node and whatever site it is you're trying to connect to. In fact, a team of researchers several years ago harvested a bunch of unencrypted email addresses and passwords in this manner, even though they were sent over Tor. The fact that anyone can run exit nodes also means that you don't know who could be looking at your information on the other end. To alleviate this problem, Somewhat, the Tor Foundation provides the Tor browser for free, which is a modified version of Firefox that, among other things, attempts to use the encrypted HTTPS standard instead of the regular HTTP for as much activity as possible, and also disable certain plugins that can leak your IP address. Many plugins and other applications for that matter won't run over the Tor network by default. It is possible to force other applications to use the Tor network either by manually configuring them or using programs like Talo that do it for you. But since unencrypted information that you send or receive can still be seen by exit nodes, some users have tried using virtual private networks or VPNs in conjunction with the Tor network to create encrypted tunnels at every point of the connection. Not a bad solution as long as you can trust your VPN provider not to keep tabs on you. Of course, the best idea is not to send anything personal identifying over Tor or anywhere if you can help it. Tor also has the limitation of being a rather slow network, so it may not be useful for downloading large amounts of data or stuff or streaming in 4K or using BitTorrent, especially the latter as BitTorrent's protocol can broadcast your IP address if you're not careful. Nevertheless, though, Tor is a great help to activists, victims of crime, and people who are just plain concerned about preserving personal privacy in an age where it feels like we can always be watched. Tor may not be perfect, but it's a good first line of defense against aggressive advertisers, shady governments, or, you know, virtual intelligence. And that's all for this episode. And if you enjoyed it, then thanks. Perhaps you'd like to see some of my other videos. I've talked about many other topics on this particular subject. Or stay tuned. There's new videos every Monday and Thursdays here on High Tech Man. And as always, thank you very much for watching.